I don't know how long we were out. Yeah, can you guys tell us? Cause we all I saw was welcome know. to the chat room, and I was like, wait a minute, what happened? So that just happened. I got a feeling it has something to do with Comcast. There it goes again. No, no, now it's in red. Huh, okay. So we're having an interesting little thing going on right here. No, it's, it's clearly Comcast. Hello, Comcast. Um. Well, that's, that's a little bit of a problem. Because it's still showing them in red. Now it's orange, now it's yellow. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, I'm gonna pause for one moment. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and let this like reach, let like let this like. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on, so I'm gonna give it one moment before we can con continue, because I don't. So we missed. Oh, there's like five minutes cut out. Well, that's wonderful. Wow, really? Yeah, in the on ob on OBS it has a um like a um the little thing in the right hand corner. That's how I figured it out, that we were kind of gone. Something happened with Comcast. Like, we haven't done anything. So I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick and, and let it see if it... Um... Are you going to check the light downstairs? The net's back. It just it, it went out for a moment. Is it back? Yeah. Eat on the baby dog. This is so stupid. Freaking net. I'm thirsty. Oh, you didn't miss nothing. It's just still a bunch of talking. I don't even think we're, we're not even out of the, the full like second day. So. We got I'm pretty sure they know about that because that was kind of creepy that she was just like up in her face. Let me see this. Cause now I got a little over. No. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Nope. Whew. It's hot in this room, though. What? I'm listening to the sky. So it looks like we're stable. I hope so. Didn't miss anything. I don't like that five minutes have chopped off our thing because now I think this is gonna break it up into two separate streams. Also, the chat isn't showing up on stream. What? Wait, why? Oh my god. Hmm. That's interesting. So wait, the chat's not showing up at all? Uh, well, as long as it's working, I'm, I'm not going to fight with it right now. I'll figure it out. I think the neck going in and out like it did just kind of... There is no reason for that. As long as, well, as long as it works. As long as it works, now we're good. I hate Comcast. I think they're like the worst. They're, they're, I would rather have... What? I know, I know. We we can rant about this forever, but there's not much we can do about it right now. Well, keep going. On. That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> was it necessary for me to this button so up her funny. blazer? What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this, aren't you? Ah, uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Eh. It did when I bought it. Ah. Uh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. 
Without context, I can't help that I missed us stripping Sayori and now we're putting her clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. Anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori blazer button up like that? But it's so stuffy. Hmm. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let, he wouldn't let you do, do things like this. That is true. And you take care of me better than anyone else any, would anyway. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. But that is very true. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come and wake me up in the morning. No. You're doing it, you're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell what you do sometimes. Okay, everyone. Heh. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we show the poems we wrote now? Ah, oh, yes. Yay. Cassie, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Alright. Who's first? Um, let's get Natsuki first. Natsuki's first? Mm-hmm. Alright. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Um, <laughs> glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something that tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess you if, you, you, if you've been friends with her for so long, it might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori, ha Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she probably would have just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we, we take care of each other in, in a, each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Oh! It's a lot longer. Yeah, hers is a lot longer this time. Alright. Amy likes spiders. Do you know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard she, I heard her singing in my her I heard her singing my favorite song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders. So her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. This sounds like a prose, not a poem. It sounds like a literal story. It doesn't sound like a poem. It sounds like a prose. She's just having this problem with this person named Amy. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> it doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, she does have the recurring thing of saying that I don't like Amy because she likes spiders. So that is initially part of a poem. It's just... Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can... You can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. This poem, you know. <laughs> and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree with, to that subject that this poem is an, is an ignorant joke, jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. 
I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares if someone likes what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn th to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. Well, that is like sign number five of why I like Natsuki already. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Oh, we gotta do like three of these, don't we? Yeah, Yuri. Yuri next. She's not gonna like this one as much as she liked the first Let's one. Let's see what you've written today. Hmm. This is pretty good, Cassie. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be... You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to write your brain like turn like turning a bunch of gears. I love metaphors and similes though. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's uh, certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened at the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the, scut by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my, hanging cur my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The, the moon increments the, its, its f phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto this newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic... Oh, classic... Pavolian... I can't say the last word. Classic conditioning. I slice the bread and I. Oh, Pavlonian. Pavlonian. There it is. Conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. I'm awful at this. It's like the it's like the book if you give a mouse a cookie, except darker. Basically, um, I was a little more daring with the, with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my yeah. fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's the sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Yep. Eh? Huh? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. Sh she's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yes. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that my, that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. Uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing with me. After all, if I haven't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. 
Hey, Yuri. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh, look, look at that face. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Cassie. Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really! I want to put this on my wall! Uh... Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ahaha! Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has a little more constructive has has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Natsuki's was actually probably the most helpful today. Are you sure you don't like it because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Cassie poem! Oh jeez. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. Uh... You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems, are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure exactly that's how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in this first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Let me at least try giving it some thought. Uh, you want to read something for money? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm... I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. I think this is the little I think this is the little Shelly at this point. She's like bittersweet. She's a happy person. She likes to give hugs to the rainbows. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe I can better express my feelings after all. Thanks, Cassie. I should go write that down, then. You can write my poem now, okay? You can read it, I mean. Bottles. I pop off I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger to pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. Then I put the bottle on the shelf with all other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. After all. No. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I, o I open up and in come my friends. They come in in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them all from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against, against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They are supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I do is hear echo, 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 echo inside my head. Yeah, this poem is actually very dark. It's it's actually very dark. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really dark. <laughs> Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? I mean, it's good and yeah, it's very but, dark. But I mean, I didn't dark. expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. 
The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I like, I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. She gave us a brain surgery. <sighs> what she did! It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cookies are great. Uh -huh. Don't get ahead of yourself. So I just had a habit of getting obsessed with something before drop before dropping it no more than a week later. Uh oh. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. This game makes me want to write stories again. There you go, Keto. This makes me think back. This, this gets me in a mood for a good text roleplay. <laughs> text RP. Monica. Hello, Monica. Hi again, Cassie. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, uh, well... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? Well, so wait, the first one, it was Yuri, and then this one was Sayori. Me. Okay. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about your well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So, I think that's the kind of vibe when I get reading your poem. Mm -hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Haha, <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would, en would enjoy sad things too? Okay, I understand now, given the words that I used, that it was a combination of it was a combination of happy words yeah. and a combination of um, sad. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, teach their own, and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out. I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Oh, this one's nice and short. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, and endless. I cannot... Wow, I am bad with my English. Kakufani. It's C-A-C-O-P-H-A-N-Y. That sounds like canopy. No. C-A-C-O-P-H-A-N-Y. C-A... What is it? C A C O P H A N Y. My English. Um, 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 my English. That's not. That's not canatonic. Canatonic? No. It sounds like canatonic. No, there's a Y at the end there. Mm, I don't know. Just keep going. <laughs> we'll have to look it noise. up because I don't think I feel. I don't understand. What the it's noise. Going. It won't stop. Violent and grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine cosine tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Hmm. Cacophony. Oh, I said it right the f Load me. Is it still going? No, that's it. It's interesting. Hmm. So I did say it mostly right the first time. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, found the meaning. A harsh, discordant mixture of sounds. Okay. I guess it's just the way they write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just that kind of thing i never really seen before, I guess. I love how these poems are getting darker. Are they? Yeah, they are. They're starting to get darker. It's kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be extracted as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. Nope. Amazing. 
So putting that in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. No. You never know when you might change your mind. Saving now. Don't trust you. <laughs> there, I saved. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves. So instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I didn't really do well with last minute... I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We we won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? F um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting it all in the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee hee hee. So it's a poetry reading. Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. I've been to a poetry reading a couple of times in college. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot of asking them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Hmm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and, and each put on a good performance, then I'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Mm. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. Not in front That's of a right. group of people. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with? Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same things that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know you. We all do. And if we all take, and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Nah. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. So Yuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Asiri and Monica have, have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki sh doesn't have any, any arguments left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejected glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Ah... <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. Yeah, if you have anxieties like that to do something, no. I wouldn't be able to do it personally. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, uh... no, 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 no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of certain, in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. 
More than that, her, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has intense expression on her face I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Ah, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at, it, at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do it. Why is she suddenly putting into so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into a sh to sharp syllables, syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structure that she... Wow, I am bad. Anyway, eh, I can't say another word. Enunciates with perfect timing. Wow. You can't say enunciate? It, it literally went over That's the my... word that you use when you're actually enunciating your words, when you announce <laughs> your words correctly. Oh, jeez. No, the problem was I started for a moment and then it's like, wow, I should have known this and it like hit me like, oh, like hit me over the head. Now if only this game had you writing stories, I'd be so meta. I would have loved to actually wrote the poems and like if they had to look for key words in the poems. That would be cool. This must be a rare glimpse in the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and, gives, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so off guard we must have forgotten. As we applaud it, Yuri holds the palm to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah ha ha ha. Sorry, meadow. I giggled. Hehe. <laughs> so Yuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, Try not to think of, try to think of it like you're reciting the other, try not to think of it like you're reciting the other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. So here begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheer cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost has a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori's meant when she said she what? When she said she likes my poems. It's like I get get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Yeah, even Cassie liked it. Good job, Cassie. I guess it's a good sign. What does that even mean? Yeah. It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours with that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. That might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Eh. The next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Cassie. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Cassie lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. There's poem. I'm hungry. I want tacos. Where's the cheese sauce? Now I want a cookie. But I don't <laughs> have any money. Please loan me money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good poem. <laughs> But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll have to go with what I wrote for today. I sign up and sat in front of the podium. Everyone's eyes at me, making me feel terribly awkward. This is why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> I reset my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. 
Despite that, once I'm finished, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly be gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she sounds a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if given life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put whatever face I want, want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting, all, putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Oh, she's so cute. Uh, yeah. No what problem. is wrong with her? Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for, for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really well, really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have a weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. Who has a festival on Monday? I can do this. I can do this. Natsuki's poem. Baka baka baka, why are you so stupid? Baka baka baka, why are you looking at me at like that? Baka baka baka, leave me alone. That actually sounds like a song. Sounds it does like, sound like a song. It, it sounds like um, one of Hatsumi Miku songs. It's actually called Baka. Remember? Triple Baka. Yeah. No, she actually sings that. I stand up. There's no way I'll find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. I'm just going in the North Chad now. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Cassie. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's get going. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's feeling a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing- oh! Search for it. Why is what? Siri go off? Hi Siri. So apparently Siri said thought I said, hey Siri, Siri, I was Mason about. No, don't repeat it. Go away. Why does Siri go off? I don't know why Siri went off. Your phone's acting weird. <laughs> Alrighty, anyway. Sorry, I was facing out. Ah, no wonder. Um I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to I mean Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Eh. Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. You gotta pick! Alright, what's the... I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sayori. I mean, if she asked me... What? Why are you looking at me like that? Why can't I walk both of them home? Why can't we just all walk home together? Can 
Can I walk Yuri home and nope. say... Nope. Only one or the other. It's not as crazy as Siri thinking a streamer wanted some medical assistance and said calling an ambulance in 10 seconds. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh no! So I'm gonna say you're... So, let me guess. You, you wanna walk home with Yuri? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. She'll get mad at me. But... Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does that thought make, make my heart pound? I mean... Given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? If you walk with Sayori, <laughs> she'll ask you for money. I think the choices are obvious. Cha-ching! <laughs> Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe. But I just thought to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Yeah, what the Everyone hell is, is different. talking about? Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. The conversation trails off and, I f and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? I'm gonna write another poem. Poem time! I'm guessing it's gonna be the same words. Are you saving? Yeah. Alright. Determination, happiness, dazzle, vivid, clumsy, dance, disarray, shame, alone, graveyard. The first word. Determination? Yep. Covet, sugar, kuwai, unstable, ch chocolate, precious, love, tragedy, uncanny, joy. Joy. Fickle nature, nibble, time, fluffy heart, music, agonizing, wonderful friends. Fickle. Dark, massacre, unrequited, spinning, extreme, smile, imagination, infallible, treasure, holiday. Imagination. Yeah, this is gonna sound like a Yuri poem. Despise, question, shiny existence, horror, milk, Mouse bubbles raft dream. <laughs> um, shoot, I just had the one that I wanted to. Shiny. Tears. Um, that word I couldn't say before. Childhood awesome. Cheeks effligent. Embrace entropy. Bunny whirlwind. Uh, bunny. I think I used that before, but go ahead. Bunny. Yep. Grief, melody, essence, flying, scars, skipping, daydream, twirl, bouncy, incon incongruent. Um, essence. Email, fun, extraordinary, meager, together, atone, landscape, papa, romance, flea. Flea. Aura, giggle, anger, unending, explode, whisper, cute, laugh, marshmallow, pleasure. Giggle. Anime, variants, whistle, incapable, passion, fear, blanket, valentine, beauty, adventure. I'm always gonna say anime. Eternity, excitement, contamination, melancholy, heaven sent, desire, promise, sunset, party, charm. Oh man, it has like one of my favorite words in it. You know which one's my favorite word? You probably don't. Melancholy? How did you know? You want melancholy? Uh, I don't know about what melancholy or party. Or charm. 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 Hope, special, jumpy, summer. Prayer, lollipop, universe, fester, bliss, ambient. Universe. Shopping, misery, calm, fantasy, hop, Headphones, Hopeless Vitality, Kitty, Captive. Kitty. Rainbow Hair, Warm Electricity, Play, Cry, Disown, Sadness, Inferno, Peaceful. Peaceful. Playground Anxiety, Depression, Broken, Fireworks, Analysis, Strawberry, Heartbreak, Heartbeat, Family Vibrant. Um, uh, Strawberry. Color, sensation, ribbon, comfort, ocean, uncontrollable, 
Starscape Rose, Disoriented Pink. I'm going with Starscape, sorry. Right. Other streamers I've watched made this stretch for days. Sky just too good at reading. <laughs> I thought this would take longer too. Okay, to be fair, we watch a lot of subbed anime. I'm used to going for like a long time with reading anime. Mm -hmm. So, out loud. So, this actually isn't that bad for me. As long as I don't gotta do like a crazy amount of different voices, I'm good. Vacation Silly, Swimsuit Flower, Vanilla, Pain, Cage, Games, Intellectual, Sticky. Games. Socks, Empty, Skirt, Frightening, Sweet, Jump, Kiss, Amazing, Secretive, and Cheer. I, I just want to use socks for some reason. Socks it is. <laughs> Journey, Peace, Sunny, Misfortune, Pure, Portrait, Unrestrained, Suicide, Destiny, Pout. Portrait. Defeat, Boop, Marriage, Candy, Vertigo, Fireflies, Bed, Raindrops, Judgment, Death. Death. Definitely. It's one of my favorite words. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked into. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ha. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the festival. Good ending word there, Cassie. Death. Oh, I'm pretty sure I probably just screwed myself somehow, but- It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by all of you people? Because... It's right in your name. Ma, Mon, Ika. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Huh, <laughs> that's funny. Ah, uh, never mind. That's funny. Let's just funny. focus on, on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sorry, you're sitting at the desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah, ah. Eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Ah, uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? I just feel like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Toya shows me a big smile. Don't let don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed, with everyone back with their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she knows anything about Sayori recently. They have been preparing for the festival, they must have been spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Cassie, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room... At Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. M maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking. You. I'm the one asking you, Cassie. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just want to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? 
You seem like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's just having a hard time to bring up, bring it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Cassie. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh. She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside her. What? No way. Sayori's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Cassie. Have you thought that maybe you've always... You've always seen her as so cheerful, because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, oh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up in front of her desk and walks across the room where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down to ne next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she keeps keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm not that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now this feels like I'm, I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. What does it feel like? Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me over her book. But she looked away as quietly, as quickly, at, at, with a flustered look on her face. I realized she wasn't. Go she won't get anywhere like this. I've never seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. I sat in front of my desk and sit down in the one next to her. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't do anything. But I could tell you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell what I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot, spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are the only concern of the, those who are willing to share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping them to themselves. But if you would prefer to share, share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she's a little off today. When I, asked about her, when, I asked, when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Eh. Sorry. I didn't mean to say anything stupid. It's not that, I just don't want you to misunderstand. So you and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just re or maybe I'm just reading into it a little bit too much. Cassie. The world is full of me meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mis Oh shoot, what happened? There it is. <laughs> there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah. So you think there might be something behind it after all? Mm. I think Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match with it maybe going inside her head. <coughs> and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too. I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. They need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri Sena looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious as if she was certain for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes. A person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may, unco may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Yeah, if I skip, I see the history button, so I'm good. Oh, okay. That is, I think that she'd be very, she'd be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. 
Ah, uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyways, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I shouldn't be taking my I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Dot dot dot. Okay, everyone. Every time I pass the monster calls out to the club room. I don't share our poems now. Before I know it, everyone is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. Make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. All right, who first? Yuri. Well done, Cassie. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this is a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it's just like, it seems like everyone's joining us in their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I really can't disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend, spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been a lot of fun to get to know everyone when they're writing. And I guess I'm doing and I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Cassie? Eh. Well, you know how I like to say say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're good if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of dis of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing, and have the most advice to share. I is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Hmm? For you to have become, s for you to be become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making a sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sort of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked? Yuri. What What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to show your poem now? Okay. Here. Ooh. How long is hers? Alright. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of the earth chaotically meets the surface. Under the clear blue skies, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest would get lost in, in is one where everything could be found. One can only build a sand castle where, sand, where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently look, look at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? <laughs> Either way, the outcome is the same, yet still we build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish in the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to, to a road at the, at the shore, drift forward, and I return to the earth forevermore. Huh. That's really interesting. Um, I'm aware that the beach is, is kind of an inane thing to write about. I did my best to make a more um, metaphorical approach to it. It was said very that, intimate. You said that you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the difference in our writing styles or thought processes. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just want her. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Next. Well, definitely Natsuki because now I'm curious. Alrighty, Natsuki it is. Dot dot dot. This one's all right. Now, where'd my mouse go? All right. Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. 
I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotional invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? It- No, gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you end up just scaring me away? That's, um... Oh. It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. Oh, she actually legitly looked upset. She it's looked kind of fun to hang out here, even if I even if I had to put up with you. Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. That was cute. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. Ha 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 ha. How the hell do you call that a joke? That's, that's that seriously a hurt. That's a well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess it's kind of the point. I really should just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway. Natsuki holds her poem out to me like nothing even happened. I like the cute little music behind it, though. You didn't hear that before? No! Yeah, it's like each one of them, when it goes to their poem, they have a different version of the, um, the um, main theme music that's playing. You never pay attention to this stuff. Nope. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkle, sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sun and glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way, thought, thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold in my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasonings you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away, I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day, I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, You'll learn to love yourself again. Oh, that's really that's really powerful for her. And their poems are still um, very similar. It's just yours is a bit more intimate than what um, Natsuki's is. But Natsuki's is actually really good. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. <laughs> kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's on it was a little bit more solemn. Yeah, well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh, can you really see her doing that too? Making us write about something about a simple topic then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just do it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of met metaphorical too. Yeah, it was actually. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. We're going the same route that we normally go. So Monica's last. Yep. Alrighty. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Cassie. Er, thanks. Mm-hmm. So you're you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Eh? Of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Cassie. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you'd try be trying you would try writing poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah. I guess you're the one who likes you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer than everyone else? Wait! Of course I do! That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have sometimes sometimes put up with me. And I and I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. Sometimes it's just easier to write when I'm thinking about you. Sayori? N no Cassie? 
I, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? So you are a trouble keeping her voice out of all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. I glanced around the room to make sure nobody had noticed this. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Cassie. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. Ha ha ha. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out the classroom humming to herself. Alright, so we don't even get to see Sayori's poem. What did you do? I didn't do anything. It's all your fault. What did I do? I don't know. Hi, Cassie. Oh, crap. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? No. Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her well, even in this club. More, was my Don't words you? more pushed towards Sayori? You had a balance again. Between all three of them, right? No, between um, Yuri and her. Hmm. Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... I'm just teasing. I know it takes a little bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be too afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Err, alright. Uh. A lady, the lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose. And that was ever sought, and here I am, a feather. Loss adrift the sky, vic the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the tw twilight sky. Until one day the wind pa ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and found and found no end to her gaze. The lady knows everything, knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she res responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with that, with that breath, she blows me black afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Hmm. You know, I feel like learning a lot for answers, those sort of things that get, give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost par paradoxical, because if we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. I feel like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Haha, <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? That's true. Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to show your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Instead of just telling what your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging the way it'll make you want to continue improving. 
It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Mm. Stagnating air is calming foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah. It seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. It's like 4 a.m. now. I'm getting tired. I think I'm gonna go sign off for the night. All right, take care, Keto. Yeah, we're 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 probably getting ready to yeah. like, finish after this anyway. Yeah, once. But we, yeah. Yeah, we're almost there. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please serve some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop missing her sentimental friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That curious expression come from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing! That's right. Now let's be making cupcakes. But we need, a lot, we, need, we need a lot of them, and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. Good night, Kito. Good night. Sleep well. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sawyer so will be helping me design them. As for Yuri, Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I. I'm useless. No, no. That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now. Now Nazi's pouting too. Jeez. Even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Suryu enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have a beautiful handwriting, you know? So you can so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Uh about that. I I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focuses and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Cassie. No, the one don't who need is anything to do. The one who is truly useless. Ah, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It'd be probably go a long way to give them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I'd really appreciate it. No, uh, don't make me choose. As Monica says, I spend the weekend with one of my club members. How on earth are they gonna respond to a suggestion like that? I have to choose who to I suppose I wouldn't with. mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work hanging you to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to stump mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Cassie may not like to be around if you if you only make make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, maybe more soon to assist him with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Cassie too. W what are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, guys, no, don't let's make settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Cassie to decide how, how she'd like to contribute. No! No! Besides, she hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure she's interested in. You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying that, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. No. Cassie, you're okay with this, right? In can the I, end, it's up to you. Can I just uh, run around to, like, hmm. 
each Very well. person. In that case, no. everyone looks straight at me. No, fuck! <laughs> No. Just accept your suffering and choose, says the Ragdar. No! I feel like this is where you save scum. You want right. me to save? So, what choices do I have? All four girls. Eva's... Natsuki, Yuri, Monica, Sayori. You got all four here. But Sayori's not even here! Yuri's right there! You're thinking of Sayori. Yeah, Sayori is not here. Yep. <sighs> This is Cassie Knight, so you gotta pick. I don't wanna choose! I am horrible at choosing. That's why we have you do it. You got this. You guys are asses. Ugh. But I haven't spent any time with her, but I wanna spend more time with Yuri. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like being me. Little shy, little shy, didn't you choose Yuri all day? Yeah, basically. More time with Yuri. Fine. Your heart is chosen. Well, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki? I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no. I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Cassie. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So th I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki- Will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said that I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little, little bit. Do you feel the same way, Cassie? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Dot dot dot. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, no, no. That's not what I meant after all. Uh, uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really, I don't really know why Cassie picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing I, I do for the event will compare to that, so, so, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I began to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I could tell that she tried to say something Yuri would say at a time like this. Because Sayori's always helping everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah. I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out, th out of here then. Everyone pack up their things. I thought to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Uh um. Eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way to contact you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that'd be the best way, yes. Alright then. You're in exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be starting by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, 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 not at all. I just thought I'd be, be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. As I'm not the pressure Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way. I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Cassie. Yes. Stop being so negative. Ow! Ow! I think that'll make a pretty productive team. Oh, it happened again. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any reason you may have to cho have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but, Yuri thinks to herself with extreme tense expression. 
Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out that you're overthinking, right? Eh? I, I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. Sounds like you talking to me. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says it and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we were outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance I can make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to keep my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. Alright, it's Sunday, so we're going to save and stop here because it's like, um, 4 o'clock. Yeah, probably a good idea. So, we're going to stop here on Sunday. Yeah, we're going to stop no. here. No! Wait, why? Why no? It's our normal time of stopping. Yeah, it's a cool time. You are literally five minutes away. Okay. Alright. We will... I'll push it a little bit. Yeah, five minutes away from what? So something having to continue? Or what? I think the chapter. There's chapters. Is it? Yeah. Is it actually set up like that? Yeah, chapter two. Yeah, everyone's saying that it'll go to chapter two really soon. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, we'll keep going. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and always an intimate, per intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. Go for... Go for real quick when we get to the school, we can stop. Meanwhile, I've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting me Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayuri since she left club earlier the other day. It's not like we, we text each other at, all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Okay, we are... Uh, okay, hold up. The chapter ends at the festival. You got this event, another event, then it ends if I recall right. I do not think we're going to go that far. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, somebody said five minutes. If it's five minutes, then we'll keep going. If not, we're just going to stop. Between what Sarah said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sarah's feelings to sign when she might need me? I decided to visit Sayori before Yori comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach her house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's very strange for her not to be run down and greet me. I have to her bedroom where I finally found her. Sayori? Hi, Cassie. I sit down in her room. So you force him to smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? So your room is as messy as it's always been. I always recognize the same stuffed animals in the wall decorations she's had for years now. <laughs> if you come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly want to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? So you already left by the time we decided to that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be help helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in, in, in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally got to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Cassie. 
Eh? Why can't it just be like how it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have to be so worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> so you are a... I grabbed her by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't, be, I won't stop thinking about it. Ah. Haha. <laughs> so here he gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Cassie. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Cassie? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and care into waste by having them spend time with me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to strong. How is it possible that has kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done something like everything I could to support you. Even if there's only, there's only so much I can do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you have to do is tell me. You don't understand it all, Cassie. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste the effort caring about me instead of doing important things. <coughs> I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone to be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends getting closer with, with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Cassie. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, Cassie, Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that, con that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Cassie. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts stopping next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Cassie. I... Sayori barely managed to speak, speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want for her is to know that I care. If you haven't any you care yourself selfish, then you, ha then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Jenny Sawyer finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Cassie. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go, 
As she does this, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it with you? Um, uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that'd be nice then. Yeah. So your wipes your eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this had to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, if you want to come along and help out, it would be fun. To my surprise, Surya shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus ahead on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah. Oh wait, Keto, you're having trouble sleeping. Oh no! <coughs> oh no. This is a PC game. It's actually a free game. You can get it for free on Steam. Thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started getting really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You could have always texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, <laughs> I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Any anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri wow, to my room. Wow, what a plain ass room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously. That looks nothing like my room right here. Which makes me feel anxious. It, it's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I'd be really embarrassed in my room in a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist, which is the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking... I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. It's where I keep our dirty magazines! There's the hentai. Well, obviously. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if make, and making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Insert dirty joke here. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements. <laughs> atmospheric enhancements. You know, I love the way that's Mood lighting. Aroth aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. Oh, actually, that's actually a, a good idea. But I know you plan to... Take it that far, of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an, an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're pretty that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense. I guess it's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something like that. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri runs through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I, I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the window in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that'd be amazing, don't you? I'm very yeah, dark. That'd be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? 
It's diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are with your aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you, you, you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes the switch on the button. Just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spew through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. It smells like a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose ja jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them throw through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think it'd be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to have a lot know a lot about this. I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearing herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase your origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I like to do is write a different word on each paper. We need we need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't it be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those pass in the room. It may attract some peek in peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. It, is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little tense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? When it's the excitement she feels in sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Cassie. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once you finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, do my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon that is to her desired length. Then, she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh... Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle is an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's n no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, uh, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Teach your own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Uh, Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. <laughs> cool. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feel and danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> I like daggers. You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. Oh, it's just funny how nervous you get about sh got about sharing. Daggers or kunai? It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Haha. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? You relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with, with the handle fan facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Yeah. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Cassie! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. I'll drive a bot trickles down the side of my finger. Here he takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it in a noticeable fi fidget. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah, ah. Without warning, it puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curling around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pulled my hand back. Uh-oh. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri? That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, Sure, it was a little weird, but it took me by surprise. But I guess this was... She was trying to help, right? Yeah, I think you're overreacting a little. Oh. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Cassie! <laughs> you dirty dog, you! <laughs> did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I knew that would be a bad idea. Enough for some sweet aroma jasmine in the air, it would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Cassie. Yuri gig giggle shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where did you keep your bandages? Ah, uh, I don't think I need one actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension has quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue making progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbon, we lay them out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be effective as a door curtain. What the hell was that? It looks great. Good thinking. Good come up with those, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the p paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of water cooler paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put in each, each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. I feel like that's too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking your advice, I decided to use the small plastic bathroom cups rather than the full-size glasses. I put them on a plate and catch, catch any paint that drips and bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I can't even see Yuri quickly unroll on her sleeve, pulling up back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hur hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we'd do something simple that would look very nice. I like the paint gra gradient across the banner. Starting with colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. And once it dries, I'll, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling up the curtain, you're not even the opposite size. We don't get in each other's way. Yuri uses his brush and has a few dots in different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, I'm sorry if it feels too childish. No, I didn't mean it like that. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want, want to. It's just like I can spend my time with one another. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me feel like it's a bit nicer. I think it's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are complete, quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that about things like anime and games. Where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over to Banner to grab an unu unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my hand to head to bump into hers. Kia! Sorry! Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hand in surprise. <clears throat> Are you hurt? No, no. I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked, to, asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, oh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out to fetch a small towel and I damp it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. I haven't finished this art to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly hold my, holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. Keep my hands still against Yuri's neck. She looked into my eyes. It's a little intense expression that, that I recognize from where she reads her books. It's almost as if she lost in dates and developed her own thoughts. She breathes gently half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. 
and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. He really slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. Almost over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movement seemed clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remember Silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I has I ha I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So, you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we could have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it'd be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all of her things, Yuri seems to look look a little downcast. I understand why. It's not like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. That doesn't mean this isn't the last time that can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you might need to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I know I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we could do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Ah, oh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As some of my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Cassie. Aww. Yuri takes a closer step to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Oh, oh jeez! I kinda... I kinda like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I didn't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Eh? Ah. Ha, hi, Cassie. Sayori! Just now we weren't... Eh. <laughs> it's okay, Cassie. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, um... Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry I, I'm already on your on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... so that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori? I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being mean to me. So I had to come out here and see you for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall on Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Cassie? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Say, so, Yuri, don't say that. It's true, Cassie. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. So, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but, Sayori looks away. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Cassie. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Cassie. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, 
That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slam my head down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. What are the two things? I love you. You'll always be my dearest friend. <laughs> uh, hmm. I feel like you'll always be my dearest friend is going to make her kill herself. Um. Nope, can't look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking over at the chat. They're not saying anything either. No, they're clearly saying something. Maisie's yelling, dearest friend, do it. Cassie, you have to be honest. I have to be honest? Yep, you have to be honest. <laughs> Good enough. Cassie, to be honest, you want Yuri. I mean... Yeah, yeah. So you'll always be my dearest friend? She's gonna kill herself. You'll always... What, what you need most for things is... The way things have always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me I'm a chap you just seen that's right during the club. I know you're struggling with some real difficult feelings right now, but please trust me in what I know it's best and will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll get things back to the way they were. I I see. Clear forces a smile. An incredibly pained expression. No, uh, this this is Is, is like... this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Yeah. I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I can get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Cassie. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Sari's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. And she's screaming. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked I don't even know how to react. Sayori so looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! So I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? Why are you feeling so horrible about this? There's really nothing more than I could have done. The most I do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the right path that's right. But I'm in so much trouble understanding Sayori's phase as she is, even though I can comfort her. I keep wondering if I should be do doing something more or something different. I knew those thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Okay. Yeah, we gotta save this. Yeah. I'm sure we're right there, but it is like 4-4. Four, four. It is like... Yeah, it's our... Yeah, it is it's, way sorry. past... Sorry. It's well past our time I, at this point. We wanted to stop at 4, so <laughs> yeah. That went a lot longer than what we wanted to, so yeah, we're just going to stop here. Um, did you just want to pick this up tomorrow? Or did you want to go into something else? <sighs> oh, man. Oh, I need to get a drink after that. That was a lot of reading. Woo! Five minutes, my foot. Yeah, that was more than, that was a lot more than five minutes. That was 40 minutes. Well, that's a note to end on. All right. Whew. You all that? Yeah. Sorry, Yuri's is super long. Apparently. Play it. You need more practice with English. Leave me alone, Ragnar. Leave me alone. Well, we're kind of here because we have to go to work tomorrow. So yeah, we have to go to work. <laughs> you know, we have to be up in a few hours. So um, thanks for hanging out with us. I don't us. think it would have made much of a difference. Yeah, nah. What? If we would have stopped before, then stopping here. No, I think depending on which one, um, we would have picked. All right. <sighs> To be honest, I think telling her that you loved her when it's kind of technically a flat-out lie because of the fact that you've been spending more time with Yuri, 
I think that probably would have made it worse, to be honest. But maybe that's just me. Yeah. Because it, it would have just felt like a lie, to be honest. It's like telling her telling her what she wants to hear when you know it's, it's BS is not going to help that situation. No, it really isn't. But, alrighty. So, I guess, I guess we'll, well, I guess at this point we'll probably continue. I mean, I, this is for your, this is for like for your night, so. So, we'll pick this up next t- Thursday then. It'll be next Thursday. Alright then. We'll pick this back up on next Thursday then. A lot of reading. Whew. Sorry. This will be a funny start. I'm, I'm glad it'll be a funny start because... Good. So, I guess if you haven't already... You can um, click that heart to follow. Oh, don't worry. Thank you. Yeah, you can click that <laughs> heart to follow it. if you haven't already. You know, we would greatly appreciate it. If you really like us, you can always hit that subscribe button, you know, and and, and support us and everything. We would greatly appreciate that, too. We have that awesome little um, fox emote, which th- there's other ones that we're working on for, like, the nine ninety nine and everything like that. Um, we've just been kind of... I, I think now I'm fully recovered from being sick. Yes, finally. So I think we'll be able to hit the ground running with a lot more stuff now. So that'll, that'll be good. Um, we do have our social medias. If you haven't already um, followed us, whatever what. Um, our Facebook is Duet Tales Gaming. Our Twitter is at Duet Tales. And we do have an archive on YouTube, um, which is Duet Tales as well. Our next stream will be tomorrow morning, Friday, um, 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. PDT for you guys over on the West Coast. Don't know what we're doing. We'll figure it out. We'll come back to this on next Thursday, but um, we'll, we'll figure, we'll, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. So, But we'll see you guys um, tomorrow at 1 a.m. And hope you guys have a good night. Yep, see you all tomorrow. Wait, wait, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Is it? Yeah. No, it's not. Wait. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's My Friday. Not working. <laughs> it's different because, like, it's, like, work Thursday and then, okay, yeah, no. No? Yeah, it's right. You're good. You're good. All right. Well, see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.